At the height of the Vietnam War in 1968, before the parade, mass draft card burning was urged. And the protests against it that divided the country, two young Americans made very different decisions that would make Vietnam part of their lives for the next 50 years. After I graduated from uh, Texas a and I uh, went to the Marine Corps Basic School, and then when I got out of that, and a few months later, we were off to Vietnam. I was just wrapping up my acting studies at Boston University, and uh, at that time I was uh, pretty concerned about the war, upset by the war. So I decided to do two things, that I would go down and take my physical in, uh, for the draft, uh, uh, but I would re refuse induction. Larry Vetter, the volunteer, ended up serving two tours of duty in Vietnam as a Marine infantry and recon officer, much of the time on the front lines. You believed uh, all that uh, you were being told and what you read, and you were pretty gung-ho about going over and serving your country, and that's what we all did. If you're concerned about something, you do something about it, and the way I do things is to go right to the center of the problem of where it's happening. Dick Hughes, the draft refuser, ended up in Vietnam that summer of 68 as well by paying his own way to Saigon in search of some kind of alternative service he could do. Confronted by bands of street children orphaned by the war on his first day in country, he helped them find food and safe shelter with money from cashing in his return plane ticket. Dubbed the Shoeshine Boys Project, it grew into eight safe houses Dick ran in Saigon and Da Nang until the war ended. Hey, you're a Saigon cowboy. Saigon VC. These kids slept in the streets, shine shoes, and uh, watched people's motorbikes and things like that to have money to live. And I think over the course of seven years, probably in the area of 2,500 children went through the project. A person being a conscientious objector, I think that's perfectly valid. At that time, I would have said something more like, well, find a way you can serve your country and if you don't want to be in the military, maybe you can be in something else. Two Americans with very different perspectives on the Vietnam War and a sense of service in the 60s now find themselves working on a common mission, the battle against Agent Orange, the dangerous legacy left over from the war that continues to plague another generation of Vietnamese. I got diagnosed with a cancer that uh, was listed on the VA list as being caused by Agent Orange. And so that was one of the reasons why I asked to meet people in Vietnam uh, that had Agent Orange diseases. Most American tourists passing through Da Nang Airport don't know it's been one of Vietnam's most contaminated Agent Orange sites, with dioxin levels in some areas 350 times international safety standards. Nor did I when I was flying out of the Da Nang Air Base as a Marine aviator in the 70s. The Agent Orange defoliant was used during the war originally to make enemy positions more visible from the air. While it was stored in Da Nang and other air bases, it leaked into the surrounding areas and is believed to have contaminated local water sources according to a study done by Canadian scientists. In this area, next to the airport, uh, you have people whose uh, dioxin levels in their blood are 100 times the safe level, and you have women whose breast milk is four times the safe level. Originally stationed in Da Nang during the war, Larry moved here in 2012 after recovering from prostate cancer, one of the many presumed Agent Orange-related illnesses. Nearly 250,000 American veterans are being compensated for Agent Orange. He's using his veterans' disability benefits to help two Vietnamese brothers severely crippled by those presumed Agent Orange illnesses. Tuan, age 25, has been in intensive care for the past two years, no longer able to move or swallow on his own. By the age of eight, he was seriously showing the symptoms, stumbling, not having the strength to pull himself up. They saw some American doctors. The American doctors told him that they thought it was uh, 
likely disease caused by Agent Orange. Family Larry is helping camps outside on the hospital's walkway because Vietnamese families are responsible for feeding and bathing their hospitalized relatives. The mother Wa really works very hard trying to hold the family together. Her husband is paraplegic, two boys quadriplegic. I guess I feel, feel a little bit of a national guilt of what uh, we did here in Vietnam uh, to so many people. I need to, just in my own little way, try to help. The Agent Orange problem has also drawn Dick Hughes back to Vietnam, where some of his former shoeshine boys are helping him work with another generation of children still at risk from the war. We decided to form a thing called Loose Cannons and try to get some assistance to people in Vietnam who had been exposed to dioxin and who needed some help. Most people think Agent Orange was something that happened in the war. They don't realize that the byproduct of Agent Orange dioxin is still in the soil, in the vegetation, in the fish, and that people today are being born with deformities and illnesses. It's also being passed down in the genes. The Red Cross estimates there's three million people in Vietnam today suffering with Agent Orange. And it wouldn't take so much really to help them, but they are a constituency very far away. While Larry tries to generate support for his and other Agent Orange families through his Children of War social media campaign, Dick has taken his loose cannons advocacy mission to Washington to persuade legislators to include funding for Agent Orange victims assistance programs in the Defense Department's budget. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse first met Dick in Saigon in 1972 while visiting a shoeshine boy's house with his father, who was serving there as the deputy U.S. ambassador to Vietnam. But they let me through. That's the other thing you better It is like a circle. You know, we started off on different sides, but now we ended up at the same place. I think it's interesting that those who served in Vietnam in different ways have come together to help in solving the last of the wounds of the Vietnam War. For the PBS NewsHour, Mike Saray, Da Nang, Vietnam.